Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to the Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at using Samba to mount the file system and access the Home Assistant config files on our Raspberry Pi server or other Home Assistant server if you've got something different. Now, before we get started, I would appreciate it if you took a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get notified when I release new videos each week. And if you want to help to support the channel, you can also use any of my affiliate links in the video description down below, including NordVPN, or you can contribute to my Buy Me A Coffee page. That being said, let's get started. So a comment recently on a much older video made me realize that while I've gone over setting up the Samba file share and mounting it in a previous video, it's kind of buried in the middle of that video and it really deserves a separate video all to itself. So today I'm going to make amends for that. Now for some prerequisites, you're going to need to have a supervised installation of Home Assistant server up and running on your network already. If you are running Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi like me, you should be set because those tend to be a supervised instance of Home Assistant. If you're running in Docker containers or those kinds of things, you might have some trouble getting this set up. Now, before we can connect to the shared folders, we're going to need to install an add-on into Home Assistant, and this is why we need the supervised instance of Home Assistant. So here on my Home Assistant, I'm going to go to the configuration menu down the left-hand side, and I'm going to head to add-ons, backups, and supervisor. And in add-ons here, um, this has changed a little bit since I did the video where we set up Samba. I need to click on the add-on store in the bottom right-hand corner here. And what I'm looking for is Samba share, and it says expose home assistant folders with SMB or SIFs. So if I click on Samba share, we can click on install here. And this will take just a couple of minutes to install the add-on. Okay, so once the Samba share has finished installing, I'm going to uh, turn on auto update and watchdog uh, and leave start on boot turned on as well because I want that to start up every time my Home Assistant instance restarts. I'm going to head over to the configuration tab here and you can see it's already got the default configuration, so uh, we don't necessarily need to change anything in here, but what I do wanna do is change this password from null. I wanna make this something unique to me. Now, in this case, I'm just gonna call make this password hive1234. Because this password is stored in plain text, uh, it is pretty important that you don't use a password that you're using anywhere else uh, in case something happens with your configuration and it gets leaked. Um, you can also change this username field here to something else if you wanted to. You could call this admin. Uh, and if you are on a somewhat complicated Windows network, you may need to change this work group away from the work group in all caps. But uh, in most cases, you probably won't need to change that at all. If you wanted to, you can uh, remove things from the allow hosts to uh, restrict the uh, IP addresses that can access this. You could remove, for example, the 0 slash 16 here and put in explicitly your IP address if you've got a static IP address on your computer so that you can only ever access the SMB shares from that computer and that IP address. Uh, and that makes it slightly more secure. These veto files, um, things like the thumbsdb, the DS store, and the dot trashes, those are files, hidden files that macOS uh, tends to put in place when accessing SMB shares. So um, this will stop those files from being put in place on those shares. Uh, so now that that configuration, we've just changed the username and password. I'm not gonna change anything else. Uh, compatibility mode we don't need. Uh, that changes the SMB version to an older, less secure version of 
uh, SMB uh, and we don't really want that. Uh, I'm just gonna click save. And if you want more information on what any of this YAML does, um, that is all contained in the uh, documentation page here. I'm gonna head back to the info page here. And now that we've changed the configuration, we can click on start here in the bottom left and we can see that it is started up and we've got the add-on CPU usage has spiked a little bit there. Uh, and that should, uh, after it's finished indexing a bunch of things that should start to settle down a fair bit. So now that we've started the Samba share add-on, we should now be able to connect to the shares. And uh, we'll do that for both Windows and Mac so that you get an idea of how to do that. Now on Windows, there's more than one way to get this done. The easiest is to open up a file explorer window and go to the network item down in the left hand menu. Once you've done that, you might need to wait a few moments for the network discovery to complete. And then provided your settings are correct, you should be able to just double click on Home Assistant. The first time you connect, you should also then be prompted for the credentials that you entered into the configuration file on your server. Once you've entered those credentials, you should then see the shared folders. Another option is to open a file explorer window and then in the address bar, similar to how you might type in a URL in a web browser, you can type in backslash backslash followed by the IP address of your home assistant server. Again, you'll likely be prompted for the credentials the first time you connect. And once you've entered those, you should be able to see the shared folders. Now on Mac OS, it's going to be a little bit different and there's more than one way to go about it. The first is similar to Windows. You can either open up the finder here or I prefer to just double click Macintosh HD. Once you've opened up the finder, if we scroll down the left hand side, we should be able to find network in the sidebar here. You can also use a keyboard shortcut to do this and the keyboard shortcut when finder is the active application on your Mac is Command, Shift, and K, and that's going to bring up the same network window. Once inside the network window, you can double click Home Assistant, and the first time you do that, it's going to say connection failed. We can click on connect as, and it's going to ask us for our username and password, and I'm going to put in admin here, uh, and I'm going to put in the password. This is my production server, so uh, it's worth mentioning that this is going to be different. And so we are now connected as admin, and we can see the file shares there. The second way to do this is with Finder as our active application. We can click on this Go menu here and we can click on Connect to Server uh, and we get this window here. And the shortcut key for that, again, with Finder as our active application is Command K, so similar but without the shift. Uh, and you can see we've got some history here uh, where I've connected to a couple of different things. Uh, what I'm going to do in here is I happen to know that my server is on 192.168.1.146. So the address that we need to put in here is SMB. So S for Sierra, M for Mike, B for Bravo, and then a colon, and then two forward slashes, and then the IP address of the server that we're trying to connect to. If you wanted to save this in the favorite servers section here, we can click the plus button down the bottom and you'll see that that's now added it to the favorite servers list. Uh, and I can then just tap connect. Now it's going to prompt me for my credentials and by default, it's grabbing my local computer username. I'm going to obviously change this to the details that we set up in the config file. And this is 146. So I know that this is the one that we just set up. If we want to, we can tick the box to remember the password in Keychain. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna tap connect. And then we get the option to select which share we want to actually connect to. So uh, there are a number of shares. There's add-ons, backup, config, media, share, and SSL. And we'll take a look at what is contained in those in a minute. I'm gonna hold the shift key and click so that we have got all of them selected. And I'm gonna tap okay. 
Okay, so uh, now we have all of those mounted and uh, my finder setup, I have my finder setups to show uh, connected servers on my desktop and you can do that in your finder preferences uh, and uh, make sure that uh, connected servers is checked here. I always have uh, both hard disks and connected servers checked. Uh, it's left over from the days before those were not default. So I just want to demonstrate two other things that we can do uh, with the way we connect to server. So the first thing that we can do is I can type in slash config and that's the name of the share that I want to connect to. And if I hit connect and then put in my admin password and hit connect, now we don't get the option to select the share that we want to connect to. It just connects the config share. The other thing that I can do is before the IP address, I can put in admin colon and then at. So I can put the username and if I wanted to, I could put the password in here as well, but I generally wouldn't recommend doing that. So I can put admin at 192.168.1.146 and then add that as a favorite. And then when I hit connect, instead of having to change the name from my local account password, I can then just um, type in the password, which in this case was hive1234, hit connect, and we get the option to select the volumes that we want to mount, and I'm gonna mount those all. Now the names of the shares that are exposed to Samba are mostly self-explanatory, but let's quickly go through them. We've got add-ons, which is for, well, add-ons custom components that you want to load that maybe are outside of hacks. I don't think this is used particularly much anymore, so it might not be worth worrying about. Backups is worth looking at, and if you open up that folder, you'll see we've got all the tar files in there from any time we backed up our system. Now the hex file names aren't super helpful, but you can manually name the files and it is worth grabbing some of these periodically and putting them somewhere safe in case there's an issue with your Home Assistant install. For example, uh, I use a Raspberry Pi and the SD cards in Raspberry Pis have a tendency to fail after extended use. The config folder is the most important share it contains all of the YAML configuration files, so configuration.yaml uh, and secrets.yaml, scripts.yaml, etc. And this is a folder that you might want to click and drag onto Visual Studio Code, uh, where you can then start to explore the file system a little bit and modify the different files. For example, uh, configuration or scripts.yaml, you can click on any of those and then just start typing and modifying those uh, using this method. Uh, that being said, it's probably not the best method anymore. Uh, and uh, we'll discuss a better method uh, in a future video. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. The media share is a place where you can copy music and other media that you want to host on your home assistant server. And you can then play that media through any of the media player integrations. The share folder is just a generic share point on the home assistant server where you can drop any general stuff that you might want to use. And lastly, SSL is where you can put your SSL certificates if you're securing your server with HTTPS, which you absolutely should be if you're going to be exposing it to the internet. So that is how to set up and mount the Samba share for Home Assistant. If you're unclear about any of the setup, be sure to drop a comment down below and I'll see if I can help out. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea you'd like to see covered in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hive Mind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button to make sure that you give it a like and that helps the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not already subscribed, now's the time to change that. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get a notification when I release new videos each week. If you're currently in the market for a VPN provider, I've placed an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description as well. I've chosen to partner with NordVPN because they've got the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers I've looked at. They have a strict no-logs policy 
and servers all over the planet. And on top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform around, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. So no matter what platform you're using, you can protect your personal information while you browse the web by using a VPN. So get a VPN today and use my link below. Lastly, if you enjoy what I'm doing and you want to support the channel, but you're not in the market for a VPN, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. And the contributions that you make through buy me a coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.